Hello, here we discuss a creation of new processes. Since the topic is tricky, this video is longer than usual. Take a look at this process. Right now it is alone in our picture. But operating systems give processes a curious ability to create new processes. Thus, this process can create another process. The initial process is called a parent process, and the newly created process is called a child process. How can the system tell one process from another? Easy. Each process has its own name, a process identification number, or a process ID for short, or even shorter, a PID. A process ID is just an integer number that is unique for every process on the computer. This number is used to distinguish one process from another. Let's say that two processes in our picture have the following process IDs. I have chosen them randomly. Look at our child process. What do you think? Can it create a new process itself? Of course yes, why not? Maybe even two new processes. The child process becomes a parent process for two newly created processes. In fact, there is one main process in a system that was created when the computer booted up that started all other processes. Usually this process has the process ID 1. This whole structure is sometimes called a process tree. It is a nice way to represent the relationships between processes in a system. Usually, in books and in classes, process creation is discussed using a Linux command. This command, this system call, that a process can use to create a new process is fork. The fact that fork is not just a command but a system call means that the process cannot create a new process by itself, so it asks the operating system to do it. Most modern operating systems provide a command for creating a new process. But the fork command from Linux, which first appeared in Unix actually, is very short and simple, so it is easy to use. If you check the process creation command from uh, a Windows operating system, create process, you will see that it is very complex compared to fork. So what happens when a process calls fork? Here we have the process in RAM memory. Here are the process commands. Let me remind you that the area with commands is called text section. And here we have all the data, all the variables belonging to the process. When the process calls fork, the operating system creates a second copy of that process. The operating system just takes everything that the process has in RAM memory and creates a second copy of it in another region of RAM. So instead of one running program, you receive two identical or almost identical running programs. What do I mean by almost identical? What is the difference? Obviously, the process IDs of the processes will be different because uh, the process ID for every process on a computer must be unique. Another important difference is the return value of fork. Fork returns zero in the newly created child process. But in the original parent process, it returns the process ID of the newly created child. The process ID of the child is always some positive number. In this way, the operating system introduces the child process to the parent process. So, if we write the following code, these two lines, a new process is created. Data type PIDT is basically an integer data type, and PID consequently is an integer variable. The value of PID will be zero in the child process, but in the parent process PID will be equal to some positive integer number, that is the process ID of the child. If you have never dealt with these things before, it might be pretty hard to change your way of thinking about programs. You are used to looking at the code and analyzing how the program will execute. But once the fork command is executed, the original program is completely copied with all of its variables and all the values assigned to them. After fork, instead of one running program, you have two independent running programs that are absolutely identical 
except for the return value of fork. The next important thing to memorize is from where the child process will execute. After fork creates the child process, it runs from the command that follows fork. The fork command is also copied to the child process together with everything else from the parent. So, the first command executed by the child process is the command that follows fork, which has created this child. Let me stress it once more. The child process does not start from the beginning. It starts after the fork by which it was created. For a better understanding, let's analyze the following program written in C. Printf, as you can guess, is a command for printing a message on the screen. Backslash n is not printed on screen. It is a way to start a new line. In the beginning, there is only one process and it proceeds in a classic fashion. But then fork command creates a copy of the original process and two processes start running independently. The only difference between them is a return value of fork stored in a variable PID. It will be zero in the child and positive number, which is actually the child's process ID, in the parent. Using this difference, we create two pieces of code that will be executed. This one only in the child and this one only in the parent. The child process will print I am a child on the screen and the parent process will print I am a parent. It is a classic technique to use a return value of fork to make two otherwise identical processes do different things. Pay attention. The first command that will be executed in the child process is the one that follows this fork. In our case, it is this assignment operator followed by the if statement. The same command will be executed next in the parent process and this is pretty natural. Here comes another very important fact. This is quite a shift in thinking, but it is important to understand. Since we have two independently running programs, there is no telling which one will execute its printf command first. So the output can happen in a different order, like this. Again, for this code, the sequence of messages appearing on the screen is not defined. It could be one way, but it also could be the other way around. That was a long video. Let me summarize its main points. One process can order the creation of another process. The original process is called the parent process and the newly created process is called the child process. Each process in a system, on a computer, has its own unique identification number called a process ID. Fork command creates a copy of the process. This copy is identical to the original except for the return value of fork. Fork returns zero to the child. Fork returns the child process ID, which is a positive number, to the parent. After fork, both the parent and the child processes continue their execution independently right after the fork command. That's it. Thank you for being with us.